Elon Musk has given me the escape that I've been wanting for the last couple of months. I'm not even using Twitter all that much anymore. You know, I don't, I, do you guys still use it like daily? No, I used to like multiple times a day check it, and now I go days without doing it. I just use it to check uh, like news and things like that, but I don't actually use it for myself anymore. Mm -mm. Yeah, sometimes I like retweet stuff or I'll get updates on like what Taylor Swift is doing. But other than that, it's not really like a social media lifeline for me anymore. Yeah, it's just such a negative place to me, you know, like and, uh, you know, clear my headspace. I've just been using it less and less and less and less. And one of the powerful tools before was that when somebody was being an a-hole in anybody's life, you could block them on Twitter. You know what? I've always kind of felt like social media is that's my property. That's my real estate, right? You want to come on into my house, you got to be nice. You got to be polite if you want into my house. And if you're going to be nasty, I'm not going to invite you back to my house anymore, right? So you can block somebody. Well, Elon Musk said on Friday that they are going to be losing the blocking feature. So yeah. anybody can say whatever they want to you online. To me, that just gives permission for anti-bullying or t it gives permission for bullying yeah. online. Spoken like a true bully. Yeah. <laughs> I'm obviously not the biggest Elon fan in the way that he handles business. I don't agree with it. But then again, I'm not a billionaire who owns multiple companies. <laughs> so what do I know? But my point is like, I think a lot of people are blocking him. And to me, this scream, like you, we've seen him make emotional reactions and changes on Twitter. To me, this screams he's been blocked too many times by people, so he wants it unblocked. Yeah, it seems like the only people who have uh, who would like the idea of there not being a block factor <laughs> are the people who get blocked all the time. Trolls. And exactly <laughs> that. And his reasoning for it was the funniest part, because it doesn't make sense. It, it makes plenty of sense to be able to protect your mental <laughs> peace. Right. What are you talking about? I think it was Cassie when we were talking about this off the air that said, look, if somebody says something nasty to you in the real world, you're allowed to turn your back and walk away and never talk to them again. But you can't do that socially anymore? Yeah, you're just gonna, media? you're gonna have to say, and that's the thing. People can say you can ignore it, but you can't when you're like in your replies and you see it front and center, yeah. Yeah. and it spikes that anxiety and that anger and that yeah. cortisol level. Like there's no escaping it. Right. I mean, you really got to protect your mental health here, and he's not allowing you to do that <laughs> in this case. I think it's a really, really stupid strategy. Well, it's one step closer just to, to, to deleting the whole entire thing. Yeah, yeah right. He's given me. I wanted this. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been looking for a reason to get off of Twitter. <laughs> uh, speaking of mental health here, let me ask you guys a question. All right. Because I see where he was, maybe I understand where he's coming from, from his history, but it's never a good idea. So I'm talking to somebody on the phone last week that goes out on a first date, pretty traditional stuff, you know, like now traditional. Uh, you meet on a dating app. Oh, it's so traditional. Uh, they meet on a dating app and then it escalates into texting. They get off the dating app and now it's time to meet for the very first time and actually go on a first date face to face. So they're both excited about it. And I think from um, maybe from... Um, Linking up on Hinge or whatever until the first date was a month. So they felt like they knew each other pretty well. It's a long time. Is it? <laughs> it's like having a pen pal at that point. You're yeah. writing letters back and forth like he's off at war. And then all of a sudden <laughs> you meet up at a bar and say, it's so good to meet you, Jared. Oh, darling, did you get my letters? I wrote you every day. <laughs> um, how long would you say on average from you like swiping on somebody to first date usually? God, I, for me, I want it as short as possible because I hate the pen pal thing where it's like, good morning. How is your, I don't know you. You are yeah. a stranger on the internet. So for me, I try to make it less than a week and if it's longer than that there's got to be a good excuse okay so anyway so they go out and they're having it they're vibing and they're talking about their past and they make the one mistake of talking about their exes on their very first date so she was saying why she's no longer with uh, her dude and then he says something to the effect of well i'll be honest with you my last girlfriend uh was bipolar and it was really really challenging to me and I tried to hang in there. It was a very difficult relationship for me, but it just didn't work out. And it was the reason why, quite frankly, we're not with each other anymore. So then he asks her, so with that, because I don't want to go down that road again, can you tell me a little bit about your mental health? <laughs> right there, first date. First date, right? So I wanted to ask you guys, is this shady or not, or is it legit knowing that he's got a past here and he knows this is not what he wants? It still seems kind of icky to ask, it right? Is, no, it, it, I mean, from the, you just saying that, the cringe I felt. Mm -hmm. And I, I get that he has, um, he has a past when it comes to somebody who was dealing with that and it wasn't a successful relationship and it was hurtful to him and there, there's some, he's, he's struggling with that. He's trying to avoid what broke, what quote unquote, Yes. He couldn't handle in his last relationship. I, I t and I, res I respect that. But I also respect her privacy. And like the very first date, 
No, that's intrusive. Mm -hmm. Like that's, 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 that's overstepping a boundary and that's overstepping a line. And personally, if somebody, you know, asked me that we are trying to break the stigma of mental health. I think mental health should definitely be talked about, but this doesn't seem like it's being talked about in a productive way. Like you're fishing to find out if I have any mental health problems to see if you want to date me. That just... That doesn't sit right. Yeah, let's find out if we even like each other first. Because yes. right. here's the thing. We we all come into relationships with our own baggage, right? And you have a right to let somebody know, you know, your relationship history. But there's got to be, and I've talked about this before, there's got to be a natural progression of the relationship. And instead of just jumping this massive bag on her on date number one before the bread basket even comes out, you kind of want to like trickle your baggage mm-hmm. onto somebody. You know what I mean? So it's totally fine if that's a part of your relationship history, if you've had these um, you know, problems with handling somebody else's mental health and you don't want that in a future relationship, totally valid to not, but maybe on date 10 and not um, <laughs> right. within 30 minutes of seeing right? somebody. There is a line there, I feel like, because you do want to, I guess, know the red flags as soon as you can and wherever they, whatever they may be because you don't want to waste your time and you want to get it out the way early. But that... That just feels like a very intrusive question. Like, I wouldn't be offended if someone asked me. It wouldn't bother me. I would just feel like you have a right to say yes or no. Mm -hmm. But I certainly wouldn't ask someone else that on the first date. I'd say, yes, I do suffer from it. Then I throw a drink in your face. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. Proving that you definitely don't want to be with me. I would be like, I do suffer from some mental health issues. I want you to guess which one you think it is. <laughs> Let's play a game. Let's play a game. Name that mental health struggle. Go. So we're all in agreement. Ditch, don't date. I wouldn't date him, no. Um, I, I think he just missed a social cue. I wouldn't ditch him, but uh, definitely flag it. What I hear you saying is it depends how hot he is? Yeah, it depends on okay. how hot he is. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's rough out here, Bert. <laughs> The Burt Show. So, first, thanks for watching. Second, you like what you just watched? That just scratches the surface. Get The Burt Show on any podcast platform. We're so good.